Let's go earn the Data Manipulation Alteryx Core Credential. Folks, it is a good day. It is the 24th day of our 30-day challenge. And make sure, I should have adjusted this before we start. Great day today. The Browns won today. The Buckeyes won yesterday in miraculous fashion. I, uh, it's, it's about one or two weeks a year I get to hit this double, uh, double elimination, double threat. I don't know what you want to call it, but the Browns and the Buckeyes both won. I just, you know, it just gives me a rosy outlook on everything. In addition, my wife and I completed the 75 hard challenge today. Um, so finishing today, I've gone 75 days with no alcohol, no coffee, Two workouts a day, one outdoors. We finished with an awesome uh, two-mile walk on the beach and just super cool. We've got some stuff to do tomorrow. We'll do a live stream tomorrow night, I think, and that will be on my YouTube channel, probably her Facebook, and just have a little celebration. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. You're not here for that. You're here to talk about Alteryx and the 30-day challenge, which is winding down day 24. We are getting down to the home stretch. And we've only got two tests left. I knocked out the second to last test today. That is the data manipulation core credential. It was a bit of a challenge. It, uh, there's some questions on there that make you stop and think. I couldn't burn through this one in 10 minutes like some of the earlier ones. There were not as many practical application questions as I was expecting. I won't tell you exactly how many, but it's the PRAC app portion is not burdensome. The challenge of that test is the multiple choice. I'll go over the, the themes that are in the study guide, how I found the test. Obviously, I can't give you the answers. I can't tell you specifically what's on there. That would be unethical, but I can tell you what to focus on. It, it's all identified in the study guide. I will just reiterate the things that are in there and maybe give you a few nudges in the right direction. Other thing we've got to do today is we've got to finish the continuing core topics learning portion of the learning path, which is our last actual study section. Let me go ahead and share the screen. Nope, bigger, there we go. The last two videos we've had to include the live one, we first went through the the join tools, here let me, I'll show you. First went through the find replace, append fields, and I did the data writing in one video. In the live video, we covered transpose and cross tab, which are the real, the more challenging ones. And I said, once that video got to like the hour phase, that's about as long as I like to go. I don't even really wanna do that. I'd rather keep it to half an hour. This one will probably run a little long. And I said, we'll do the capstone project later. Let me go through the capstone project with you. I'm not a big fan of it as a good prep for, and, and honestly, any of these tests. I think that this capstone project problem is too involved. I think that it stresses some of the wrong things. I don't think it's all encompassing. It, it'll touch on data prep. It'll touch on uh, blending joins it doesn't you don't need a find replace you don't need independent fields you don't even need a union so to me it kind of it hits on each palette but it's just not it's not a comprehensive capstone and it also just it really stresses the transpose and cross tab and in a way that is just not it's kind of more rigorous than the the certificates or certifications will will test you on. So I just don't I don't particularly like it as a good check on learning for this learning path. I I think it's a little too difficult. Just me. I will go through it and I will point out to you as we go through what I mean about that. Okay. So two tasks today. Let me stop talking about it. Let's just get right to it. We'll do the capstone project first. Then I'll get to data manipulation and then talk about what we're doing next. Here is your capstone project. 
So it says, use what you've learned to make the engagement survey results more end user oriented. Start by calculating the departmental averages for each question. Departmental averages, you have to get through this supplied survey data, and we'll take a look at that. Then you have to add in the industry benchmark data and compare the results. Scores averaging one point below benchmark should be flagged for review. Let's evaluate our data because from that description, you really can't get much about what you're gonna to have to do. Obviously, you're gonna to have to calculate an average. That's a summarized tool, super easy. But let me show you what, what I don't like. Okay, well, I didn't run it here. My wife used this laptop for a test earlier. She's finishing her degree, and so I had to log back on and get back into all my stuff. Okay. Here's the... All right, so you can see that this survey data is kind of a pain. You've got just going through a basic assessment. Okay, so your your fields are poorly named. Field one, field two, field three. That's a problem. Then it looks like you've got header data in columns or actually like alternating rows. So you've got name, Mary Guidry. Name, Ann Roberts. So you've got your headers and then the information following it. Then you've got department training, department customer support. So you've got headers on, on rows one, three, and then going down and information on rows two and four. I don't, I, I've never seen a data set actually come out like this. I don't know how often this happens. So I, I don't, to me, this is not a good, it's not a good exercise. This is not, not a good test of abilities. Anyway, I, I have not been in data forever and ever. Don't have a ton of experience. I just, I, I don't see it coming out with this. Anyway, so in the odd rows, you have this question one, then a delimiter, then the question, or, or a survey, not a question, it's a statement, and you give it a score. I understand how my role contributes. My work is recognized by my leadership, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got odd numbered rows that have headers, if you will, and then even number rows that have information. The even numbered rows show on a scale of one to 10, I guess, how much they agree with that statement. Maybe it's one to seven because I don't see any anything above seven. Okay, so we've got a bunch of things we've got to do there. Let's go down to the benchmark data. All right, so this is clearly synthesized a little bit better. You still got bad headers name, one, two, three, four. Department, now you've got department in a row with the departments there. So obviously you gotta pivot that. You've got the question numbers concatenated with the question again. So we probably need to text the columns there. And then you've got the average of the, the previous survey data. So whatever survey they did last year, here are the averages of the answers to these questions. So there's a variety of things that we have to do. Let's look at what our target is. Okay. Predictably, yeah, we need department as a field. And you can see there are duplicates there. We need the question numbers as a field, but the question Q5, Q2, Q1 by itself. Then we need the question itself as a field. Okay, so obviously text to columns to get to there. And then the new score, this is your average. I can type, let's zoom it, but uh, it's more fun to just write. Okay, that's a G, average. Then we have the benchmark data, which we already have from last time. That's in this supply benchmark data here. The delta between the two, easy enough. That's gonna take a formula and review, create a new column. That's gonna be another, just another formula, okay. Let's let's get started. Let's go easy to difficult. We know how to do text to columns. Let's just get this supplied benchmark data in some form like this. So we'll start out text to columns. Let's get this column that says department here hashed out. Okay. The poorly named Oh, sorry, it's the name column, it's not even department. Department's the first row of values. We need not four, we need two columns to come out and our delimiter is a colon. Let's make sure that goes.
Good. So here we have now, now the even worse named text of columns works. So we have just the questions here. We got to do something about the header. Got it. And then we have the actual question here. All right. So that's looking more like the final, uh, the final outcome. What else do we need to do? Well, okay. Let me give you a glimpse into the future. Once you're all done with your core certificate, you can learn something called uh, developer tools. And developer tools will be able to solve this problem for you where you have, well, you don't really on this one, but it's on the other one, where you have headers in the first row. Right here, you don't, you wouldn't be able to solve anything with that. Um, but yeah, you, you actually can because the first row of data here, like this is the customer operations data. This is the customer support data. This is the HR data. You don't need these, you know, where it says department. That's just, like I said, I can't imagine a data set actually coming out like this. It seems like they just deliberately like, like how can we screw up a data set? Anyway, okay, so let's just, you will eventually have a tool called dynamic rename. If you go into the developer tools and start playing with it, you'll see where you can bump up because of the Excel stupidity and Excel is not a database and the, the first, there's no headers in Excel. So the first row of data is just the first row of data. It's what you think of as headers in Excel, but they aren't. On Thursday, I'll be doing a class, uh, all tricks for Excel users. I will talk extensively about the crimes of Excel, but right now we just need to work with the tools we have and know. Let's just pull down a select and we'll just like manually rename these fields. First thing, we don't need this name field anymore. It's useless. It, it, we already text to columns it. Okay, so we got rid of the name. Field one, let's just go ahead and type. You can try and cut and paste these from the cells. It's possible. Um, it winds up being a pain because you have to keep clicking yes that you don't want the headers and all this other stuff. So it's best to just type these out. HR training, yeah, raining, sweet. This is the world's worst Bluetooth keyboard. It just randomly ditches keystrokes for no reason. I'm a bad typist on my best day, but uh, yeah, it's really bad. Okay, and if you look up here, the Q1, Q2, that's a pound sign is the, the field name there. And then uh, question is question. Let's go ahead and make them look like that. That, uh, oh, did we go off one? Yeah, that ain't department, silly boy. So pound sign there, two, two, question. All right, so now we don't need that first row. Let's just go ahead and filter it out. Always best to make your filters, oh, go ahead and run it. Always best to make your filters a little dynamic, I think. Yeah, I mean, you could just do like select records. I don't, I don't like using that because it's just not dynamic. So let's go ahead and filter anything where the question is not null. So question is not null, run it again. And our true anchor will show. Okay, so now we have a data set we can actually work with. It doesn't quite look like what we're looking for yet, but we can pivot it so that it does. Okay. So what we need is, um, we're gonna need to transform. We are in wide data now, so we're going from T, we're gonna start, it's transpose, going wide to tall data. Currently our question column and our pound sign for the question number column are in the proper format. So they're currently aligned as columns, all good with that, but we need to pivot these department names and these values into, into column, and that will match up here. So you got your department names um, in, in a column called department, and then you have your, your values, that's gonna be benchmark for this one, okay? So configuration is key columns are gonna be question and pound sign or question number. We're gonna pivot everything else. Let's let it rip. Happy day. 
Now we have the question column, we have the pound sign column. Um, that's good. Let's change, let's go ahead and refine a little further because if you start joining it from here, it gets annoying trying to figure out what the column names mean. So name is now department, value is going to be, sorry, benchmark, and now we're good. So that whole process, let's go ahead and So pound sign question, is that in the same order? Now let's just be totally, totally finicky here. Put question first like it is in the final state. And now we're, okay, so we're being super nidnoid. Question, question number, department, benchmark. Now uh, department's first. Department, number, question, benchmark. I screwed that up. So department, number, question, benchmark. Now we're good. Let's tackle this god awful dumpster fire up here. All right, so a lot of times if you have to pivot, so this, even, <laughs> this isn't even a tool that we use in this course, but you can't really, <laughs> this is another thing that I hate about this problem is it's very difficult to do without a certain tool that we I don't think we use. So record ID, it's super simple. There's no real reason it's not in the core. It's just, it's kind of a niche tool. It's, you use it to enable pivoting usually, or like splitting and joining. If you're, if you're splitting things and then joining them back together and you wanna kind of have a little earmark for them, you use record ID. You can see here this data, we don't have any granular ID. There's nothing to identify the rows. This record number here is just a reference for the, uh, the data set. So it doesn't, doesn't have any impact on the data. It's not part of the data set. In order to get that into the data set, you have to use this tool called record ID. All it does, you just configure it. What do you want the column name to be? What do you want the starting value to be? And then what, what type do you want? And where do you want it positioned? All it's gonna do is gonna put a record number on the data. And there you go, record ID, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on down to 14 records. Okay. Now let's get into how we clean up this mess. Um, let's filter. And another thing that I dislike about this problem is it's just very difficult. If you haven't done a lot of weekly challenges and tackled something like this. For a core learner, this is a really difficult thing to try and visualize. I mean, it's as if they took you from super, super baby style, like the transpose and cross tab triads did almost nothing. It was just flip it this way, flip it back, flip it this way, flip it back. It's like when you hand a two-year-old a, a Rubik's cube and they're just like spin, unspin, spin, unspin. They're never gonna solve anything. So the triad exercises really did not give you a great primer to transpose and cross tab. I think I was kvetching about that a little bit as we went through those. And then here, it just like dunks you in the deep end of the pool. Um, so we'll go through it. I'll talk about it. The solution that, there's no real way to put a dynamic solution on this. If, if I was getting my data like this, Honestly, I would go to the data source and be like, well, what are you doing to me? Um, so anyway, all right, I'm done complaining. We're just gonna solve it. The filter, now there's a variety of different ways you can do this. Essentially what we want is we wanna get rid of the even rows. And we'll just bring that back in because they're just headers. It just says name, 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 name. Okay, we know that Mary Guidry, Ann Roberts, Terrence Delpit, these are names. We'll fill that in later. There's no real good way to pivot this to get it to work. You could split it and maybe summarize and unique it. it it's just a mess. Let's go ahead and just filter out the odd number of rows. Now we could do it with select records, I suppose. Just filters a slightly more dynamic way to do it. Okay.
that'd be too easy. All right, so let's go, let's, let's work inside out on a kind of a nested formula. Let's go record ID divided by two. Yeah. The record ID currently is an integer, so record ID divided by two is gonna be fine. All of your even numbers are going to be integers. All of your odd numbers are going to be something 0.5. Let's convert that to a string. And then you have to say, what's your number of decimals? Zero, okay. Two string record ID. Sometimes when you make these nested formulas, it's, it's, it is a formula, it's in a filter, but it's in the expression editor. When you make these nested formulas, you just wanna run the, to see what comes out. We've just converted that to a string. Now what I want to do is length. See, that wouldn't, wouldn't work if the numbers got too high. Anyway, it'll work for this. So length of that is less than or equal to that should filter out. Now it wouldn't work if you went over 19 rows because on the 20th row, your length divided by two would be 10. So anyway, oh, that didn't work. Why didn't it work? Nothing filtered out. Let's get rid of that. Let's see what it is. Oh, that wasn't even a proper. We could probably do it in a formula. Here, let me pause for a second. Okay, I got it now. Because I put the, earlier I had the um, two string record ID divided by two, and I specified the number of decimal places, and I put zero. That number of decimal places for, for the two string function is optional, getting kind of deep into the weeds now, but you, I didn't want to specify that. So basically what I said was round it so that all of the record ID divided by two, it rounded all of them. So they were all a, a string length of one. So working from the inside out, what we did here is we took the record ID that we had before. So coming in, we had all of these numbers. We divided that by two. So it, this never shows up because it's not a formula, but imagine all these divided by two. So you got 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, et cetera, et cetera. Then I converted all of those to a string. Nothing changed, just it's string data now. That way we can run a length function on it. So the length of 0 0.5 is two characters. The length of one is one character. The length of 2.5 is three characters, if it's a string, okay? So length of the string 0.5 is two characters, so it's not less than or equal to one. So only the even record IDs are going to have a string length, once they're divided by two, a string length of one or less. Yeah. That's how I made a semi-dynamic filter. Like I said, if you got to a record ID 20, you'd be screwed and you'd have to think of something else. Um, and, and you could, there, there are ways to tackle that, but that's what I came up with on short notice. All right, now we have a name row, we have a department row, and then we have all of their answers to question one, question two, question three, question four, question five. Again, I don't like this problem or this solution because now you just have to remember that these are in order, that this is, that row th record three is question one, record four is question two. It just, it just kind of, it's, it's just a bad solution, but we're going with it. All right, I said I wasn't gonna complain anymore. So we have wide data. We need to get to tall data real quick. That is transpose. Let's hook a transpose to this true anchor. Key columns, we need everything to pivot except for 
This is where we're going to now use our reference. Record ID is going to be our key column. Everything else is going to be a data column. All of these terribly named field one, two, three, four. We'll get rid of that in a second. Just go ahead and run it. See if it breaks. We'll figure it out. All right, so now we have record ID two, 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 two. We have this horrible name, field one, two, three, four, five, all useless. And then we have these values, the names of the people down to, you know, then down here, their answers to question one. Again, it's really bad. You just have to take it on spec that it's going to work out. Now we have tall data. We need wide data back, but we want to group by the name, which is the fields. I think. I'm trying to remember how I did this earlier. <laughs> okay, column headers are going to be record ID. Yes, values are going to be values. Nothing's going to aggregate, but just say concatenate for funsies. Let's see. Let's see how it looks. I think this is right. I'm kind of shooting in the dark here. Okay, yeah, that that's it. All right. I told you the transpose and cross tab. A lot of times you got to iterate a few times, even if you've done the problem before, which I have. You still have to kind of play with it to massage the data the way you want it. Only real gurus that, that use these things all the time can kind of Jedi mind trick their way through it and know exactly what it's going to look like. Most of us mere mortals, we've got to try it a few times. All right. I'm sweating. I didn't take a shower after I got done with that walk. That might be too much information for you, but okay. Browns won. Can't believe that. All right. Um, so we've transposed, we've cross tabbed. Now we have a useless field here. So this field here is useless. We don't need these field names. We never did. It was just another column to pivot. Got it. So this here clearly is now the name column. Good. This here clearly is now the department column. Good. And now we can name these one, two, three. These are our questions. Okay. All right, I'll zoom it there for a second. Let's clean some things up. How do we need these? Yeah, okay. Let's clean some things up so we can label everything. Let's take a select tool, if I can find the thing. I'm going all brain cramp here. Move you out of the way. This thing's dumb. Okay. So the name field, we don't need anymore. Uh, number two is name. Number four is department. Number six is, so now we're just going to fill in our question numbers. Q1, Q2, Q3, Q43, Q4, and Q5. All right, fix my typo. Run it, admire it, see what your handiwork looks like. All right, that looks something more like what we can work with. Now, we need the, um, trying to remember what we need to do now. Um, we need to pivot the questions. Think. Nah. Okay, we can average the questions. We actually don't need the people's names anymore, do we? Nah, we don't need that. All right, let's get rid of that. So we can average the responses over the departments now? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. That's why we rehearse, folks. Um... All right, so department, we're going to group by, and then the rest of these thingies, we are going to 
numeric, and they're not numeric. All right, so change that. All of these integer. Ah, let's go double because we're gonna have to get double. Yeah, change all of these to double. Maybe not department. I screwed that up. Go back to vstring. Double and another double. There we go. Bartender, make it five doubles. Be on the floor at that point. Now, in the summarize, we can numeric, average, and we're good. I think. Yeah. Okay. Let's let it rip, see what it looks like. How many rows of data do we have now? Okay. Yeah, that's good. Uh, we can, what do we need for this? Yeah, we didn't really need to rename those in the last one, but. Okay, let's go ahead and take these averages off of here. Delete that. We just want them named for the question itself. All right, now we're going to pivot it again. Like I said, way too much emphasis on the pivot here. Like, look at the, look at the data prep tools we've used. Filter, filter, select, select, select. Record ID, which we didn't even learn in this. Like, look at all the, we're not sampling, we're not sorting, we're not using unique. Like we're not using two thirds of the uh, favorites tools. But anyway, I digress. I said I was gonna stop complaining and I am eventually. All right, so we have wide data, we need tall data. We're starting T-shaped, going to columns, we're transposing again for the third time in this exercise, done complaining. Key column is going to be department. Data columns are going to be the rest of them. Letter rip. Okay, so now we have each department. We have each question. We have 20 rows. We have 20 rows of data here, and we are ready to join some stuff together. Let's do that. All right. So we got some we got some lifting to do here. First of all, we need to join on multiple fields because we can join on department. All good. Problem is department's not granular. You can see customer operations, customer support. Each department has five questions. So we need to join on department and we need to join on the question. Coming in here, the question from this side is name. So let's go name and number over here. Okay, now we gotta figure out what we've gotta rename and what's duplicated. We don't need right department, that's gonna be a duplicate field. That's cleared up right there. The name field is already misnamed. We might as well take this pound sign field from the right because we've already named it properly. All good. This left value is our new average which we need to call score. Go ahead in this select tool functionality right here, the left value column, we will rename that score. Then we got rid of right department, we have the question number, we have the question, and we have the benchmark score. Let's order it the way it is here. Department, number, question, score, benchmark. Department, numbers right here, let's bump it up. Question right here, bump it up. Score benchmark, right? Score benchmark, yes. Let's run it, see what the join does to us. Got it. 20 records were joined with zero unjoined left and zero unjoined right. That's what we want to see. Department, number, question, score, and benchmark. So we're in there. Folks, trust me when I tell you. And this is not a complaint, this is just a statement. None of the certification tests will have anything that is even remotely this complicated. 
it is totally unnecessary for this capstone problem to be this complicated and to stress pivoting quite this much. That was one area of study. And the entire problem here is essentially hinged on your ability to pivot and unpivot a mess. All right, I'm done complaining. Let's join. We've joined. Let's get these answers. Formula is going to do it, and then we are done, sir, done. The first formula we need is to create the delta column. Delta is super simple. Let's go score minus benchmark. Don't forget to make that el numero because now we've got a math with it and you can't math with a string. I believe I've told you that before. That delta we now have to flag for, what is it, review? Review, yes. So let's make a new column called review. And our review criteria is, uh, we need to do a conditional statement. So conditional, if C, go separate lines, because it's just clear. What is our condition? This is your, your true false. If uh, delta is averaging one, scores averaging one point below benchmark. So we did score minus benchmark. Oh, benchmark, look at that. Benchmark's not a number. Ah, see that right there? We've got basic black font and we've got a little squiggly line. Benchmark's not a number. You silly thing. Where are you? Benchmark, right there. Double. All right. Now we're good. Now we're cooking with gas. That one's gonna work. Review. Score minus benchmark. If it's negative one or less, If delta is less than, yeah, one point or more, it's less than or, or equal to negative one, then review, I think it's in all caps. Else, null with the empty set, and if. That is your formula. That should work. So if that delta is less than or equal to negative one, i.e. score is, is one point or more below the benchmark, then we want to review that. Or else we want that review column to be null, and that is it. Let's run it, see if it breaks. Should see either, th I think, three reviews? Yeah, three reviews, okay. Happy day, that's all of them. And then I think they filter them, to, they sort them to the top. We'll go ahead and do that. There's no real reason to do it, but. So review, what, descending? And then department, ascending, and number ascending. Let's make it all nice and neat. There we go. So we got three questions flagged for review. Sanity check says, indeed, these, these deltas are less than or equal to negative one. In other words, the score is more than, is one point or more below the benchmark. Looking at the numbers, that hashes out. Got it. Everything else, sanity check, scores above benchmark, scores above benchmark, or not quite one point below. So within some standard tolerance, okay. And then we sort it by department and question for the ones that are not marked for review. Cool. Customer operations going down, look at that. Scores all going down, HR is killing it. Cool, cool. All right, so done complaining, just saying, if you can do this, and if you can get your head wrapped around this, you're good. Please let me know what questions you have not going to beat that up anymore. Run it back. Take a look at whatever I did. There are various ways to crack the nut on this. The more long and involved and complicated and Alteryx 
problem is, the more ways there are to solve it. Go ahead and find your own way if that didn't make sense to you. If you can find a more dynamic and adaptive way to run this messy record ID and filter step, I'm all ears. I, I know there are better ways to do this. Just this, this is, yeah, anyway, this is gonna have to do. All right, we're 40 minutes in. I, I really don't wanna belabor this too much. Cool, so that is it down to like prepping for the full designer core test. If you're doing that, if you're going for the full core test, you're going through the whole study thing, awesome, uh, kick it. The only thing we'll have left to talk about is like a weekly challenge or two, and they've got a bunch listed here. I've done, I think I've done all of these. They're all quite simple. You are fully capable of accomplishing any of these weekly challenges uh, from, from the tools that you have. I will maybe go through one or two more in an intermediate session this week and then prep guide for the full core exam and go get certified. If you're doing the, uh, if the certific certification's piecemeal, here's the next one. It is data manipulation. Let's talk about it. I just took it today. So if, you, if you're not familiar, I have never done the micro-credential certifications before. When I first earned my core certificate, uh, yeah, less than a year ago. Wow, okay. Um, let's say around, no, it was. Ah, I can't remember now. Anyway, when I first earned my core certificate, yeah, it was coming up on two years. It was the one shot, two hour test. It was a meat grinder. Everything is a little more friendly now. There's more time for it. If you're doing that full test, awesome. If you're doing the micro-credentials, this is data manipulation. This is the next one. What do we have to do on data manipulation? Here's your exam overview. It is, so it's a 45 minute test. I took most of that partially because I was taking notes at the time and trying to keep track of exactly what the test was asking. But I, I did take most of that. I expect that you will need the majority of that 45 minutes to answer it. It's 30 questions. The questions are challenging. The tools that they cover are challenging. I think that's probably part of the difficulty was, up until now, the only really challenging tool we had to deal with was formula. Now we've got, we've got more tools to deal with, and these, these are a bit tough. The last test is going to cover transpose and crosstab. I expect that to be tough as well. Here we've got, there's a lot of join questions, there's a lot of find replace questions, there are a lot of text to columns questions. They're, they're stumpers. They're not, you're not going to get them at a glance. You're going to have to think about them. It's, so it's not an easy test. Um, you can do one attempt every seven days. It's the same for all of them. There are... I don't remember any matching on this one. Hmm. Anyway, um, yeah, multiple choice, prac app. I will say prac app, not a, not a huge, huge part of this test. I expect it to be significant in the last test. But yeah, multiple choice, plenty of those. Multiple response, there's a few. But mostly it's figuring out configurations and what a tool is going to do or what's going to produce a certain outcome. You know, pick the tool that's going to produce a certain outcome. That was a lot of them. Let's go through the, the weighting of it is informative. Let me see where that is. Test tips, yeah, I got it. Exam resources. All of this is standard stuff. You've seen it before. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Let's talk about this. So it says perform unions, joins, and appends. 33% of the test. So there's 30 questions on the test. A third of the test is 10 questions. There are legit 10 questions on this and they're difficult. And it will say which tool produces this. You've got outcome input one, input two, and this output. Which tool produces this output? It's, we've seen that in the examples. You've seen it in the learning path, but it takes some time to stop and think about it. You got 10 of those. They're, they're tough. Leverage the find and replace tools, 10%. That's three questions, absolutely. 
You know with find and replace the difficulty is configuration. What field are you finding in? What field are you, you know, what are you replacing? Pay attention to the configuration options. Is it in the first, the middle, or the end of the field? Is it the whole field? Are you are you clicking the case sensitive button or not? All of these things will come into play. Converting data string formats to and from date formats. It's going to go through the configuration. It's going to go through, do you know the notation? Do you know what mm, mon, and month mean? Just know the notations. And if you don't, just pull up Designer and go into the DateTime tool and take a look. And it'll, it'll show you demonstrations. Or you can go to the help article on those uh, date notations, and it'll tell you exactly what they mean. So super easy to find those, but, but that'll stump you for a second. Delimiting data with the text to columns tool. Know how to delimit. Know what, what each delimiter is. You're going to get problems with a bunch of delimiters and try to figure out what exactly was used to parse out the text to columns. It will show you a configuration and say, what output is this going to produce for, for a lot of these, but text to columns for sure. Know how the configurations work. Know how multiple delimiters work. Do they treat it as one delimiter as a combo, or do they treat it as um, do they treat it as multiple delimiters? It's multiple, so just remember that. And then troubleshooting. There's a lot of troubleshooting errors in formulas. So just because formula is not stressed on this doesn't mean that there aren't going to be questions on formulas. They're, they're going to show you errors in a workflow and say, what, what have you done wrong to produce this error? So you really, have to, you really have to focus on those things. All of the tools come into play here somewhere. There are multiple choice questions where filter is an option, where sort is an option. There may be somewhere those are the right answers. So all that's are everything's on the table. This is just telling you this is what the test focuses on, but you need to be able to differentiate from the other tools that we've learned. The, the practical applications, they're comprehensive in the things that they test of these. And practical applications rotate. If you fail a test and you come back and take it again, you will notice that there are different practical application questions. As a graduate of multiple failed Alteryx tests, I can tell you this. <laughs> the practical application questions are generally not the same when you do multiple attempts. So my experience with practical applications may be different from yours. I would just say know how to do all of the triads and know how to string a couple of tools together to get a fence. That is that. I, I got the data manipulation certification you can to the cut line for this text test is 63 percent, 63 so that is i think i worked that out it's like 19 you got to get 19 out of 30 points to get 63 percent. i hope my math is right on that it's not it's not terribly hard if you're missing 10 or more of these questions yeah you you shouldn't pass um so no shame if you fail this test, no shame whatsoever. Just saying 63% is not a rigorous cut line, especially when you can look stuff up. You've got some time to look things up on this, on this test. You, you will not be sprinting through it. You'll be kind of sitting there agonizing over a couple of questions. Go look them up. That's, what, that's why it's an open book, open, open internet test. All right. I think that wraps us up. Uh, best of luck. If you're planning to take the data manipulation test, please let me know. If you do take the test, let me know how it went. I'm, I'm very curious to hear about first, first timers taking this test and what your experiences are. And folks, that's true with all of the tests. I really want to know if you've never used Alteryx before, how did you find the tests? Were they, were they challenging? Did you pass? Did you fail? If you're comfortable telling me that. And also, was the instruction that I've given here in these videos helpful? I really just want to show a demonstration for people of how to get through these exercises and give my advice on how I think you should tackle these tests. This is not a cheat sheet. I'm not, 
I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to give you the answers to the test. And I'm not trying to tell you, like, question one is this. And I'm trying to kind of get you through, certain people have test anxiety. They, I just see way too many people out there just stacking these Coursera certificates where there's no test, there's no proof of knowledge. Um, it's just, it's so low stress that it's unrealistic. And so if you're the Udemy king, and you're knocking out these attendance certificates, what I usually call them, which means all you got to do is sit there and sit through a bunch of videos and click, 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 and then print certificate. I don't find that valuable. And I don't think that employers find that valuable either. There's got to be a little bit of stress. And putting you in a testing environment and, and, and saying, okay, prove it. Show me that you know this. Is informative as to how you're going to perform on a job. So if you can't handle the stress of a test that you can retake every seven days forever for free, um, I, yeah, I, I have my doubts about your performance professionally. So this is what I'm saying. I'm trying to get people comfortable with taking these tests. I want to get more people ultra certified because it's a skill set that can set you apart. And not enough people know about this, and that's a shame. So... The tests are free, the knowledge is free, the learning path is free. I'm trying to make it more accessible to the YouTube world where I don't think there's a, there's a great knowledge of what an asset and what an opportunity this is. Okay, I've talked enough. What we did today was we went over the capstone exercise, warts and all. We went over the data manipulation test and how what you need to focus on to pass it. Please go take it, it's not that hard but it's not it's not a cakewalk what is our next test our next test is our final test and that is going to be data transformation where we will use the summarize the transpose the cross tab i think that's all of it nah, we'll leave that for another video so this is going to air monday the 25th we will have five days left to finish this thing up and earn our core certification I will be back in a couple of days, probably with a weekly challenge and to go over the study guide. And then with a day or two to spare, we'll come in here. We'll talk about that last test. I may, uh, I may talk about the full core test as well. For those of you trying to do the whole thing in one shot, welcome you to do that. I would say if you're new to Alteryx, you are better off taking the, the micro certifications. Just easy. But... That is it. So if you would please love the new subscriptions, we're creeping up on 450 after the Data Career Summit. Love everybody that came to see me there. I would like to do more live sessions. If you have ideas for those, hit me up. Let me know what you'd like to see. Still mulling over what we're doing for the next 30 day challenge. I expect to do that in November. I've got some traveling to do in October, but November I'd really like to do that. And I'm still still up in the air about the topic. I think it'll be Tableau, but I'm not sure. Okay, subscribe to the channel, like this video, drop me a comment, tell me how much you think my lighting sucks and I should really invest in some better gear. You can't hear me, the Wi-Fi fuzzed out. I think I've got the best spot for the Wi-Fi relay now. It's actually, it looks like it's crystal clear. So we've got that going for us, which is nice. Follow me folks, and I swear to you, I'll make you a genuine Alteryx hero just like me.